Welcome to the stream, guys. This is uh, Peter Gilchrist at the table right now. He's just warming up. Each player is going to get a turn to warm up. The refs are uh, being placed on the table. The scoreboards are finally being finalized. And uh, the match is going to begin shortly. This is uh, an English billiards event. Some of you may not be familiar with English billiards. Some of you may not be familiar with some of the people in this building. And there's some world-class champions in here. There's a lot of world-class champions in here, actually. They've all traveled from all around the world to come to Winnipeg, Manitoba, to come play in the Vimy Ridge Classic and then the Pan Am Cup, which starts on Monday. We're at 283, Anavets 283 here at 3584 Portage Avenue. If anybody in Winnipeg wants to come out and watch some of these matches, there'll be, uh, this is the Vimy Ridge Classic. It runs for two days. So it will start today as it is right now at 10 o'clock. And then uh, it runs right through till tomorrow. I believe action stops this evening around uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. It's currently at 10 a.m. It's one minute to 10 a.m. So 9.59. This is a Group A matchup between Peter Gilchrist and Kevin Agosta. There's uh, three more players in Group A. That's Rick Hutchin, um, Timothy Fulcher, and Ray Mears. There's uh, eight groups all together. So since we're waiting for the match to start up, I guess I'll uh, go straight into the groups right now. So there's um, eight groups. Group A is Peter Gilchrist, Kevin Augusta, Rick Hutchin, Timothy Fulcher, Ray Mears. Group B, Rob Hall, Steve Jones, Jules Mortensen, William Pinwarden, Trevor Westwood. Group C, Mike Russell, Steve Kenyons, Jeff Corley, Blair Lawson, Alex Lanford. Group D, Ryan Mears, Alan Sankew, Rick Sparling, Dan Loch Lockheed, I believe, David Larson. Group B, oh, these are uh, interesting names because I don't under, I may not pronounce them properly, but uh, Devage, Devage, Aria, um, Gary Marshall, John Miller, um, James Stevenson, Alan Carson. Group F, we got, um, well, that's another interesting one name, um, Durav, Durav, maybe, Sitwala. My apologies, guys, if I don't get this right. Once I meet you guys, you guys can correct me and I'll. I'll pronounce your name properly from that point. Um, Guy Smith, Ed Buchan, Aleya Prabhakar, Hal Lee, and then Group G, we got Chris Mitchell, Rick Kendall, Mark Buchan, Gregory Babiak, or Babiak. Um, group H, we got Fraser Durham, Russ Delahunty, Grant Thiessen, and John Crook. That is all your groups for the for this event for the Vimy Ridge Classic. So mm, the host is uh, laying down the law. He's giving out the rules to the players, and uh, they're about to start the matches. The matches have begun. Oh, no, I think they're getting their practice shot. Oh, no, they, they began now. Peter gets two points. Another two. Four. 
Four points for Peter Gilchrist. Kevin Augusta at the table. Looking to do an in off here for three points. Possibly potting the ball here for another three. Oh, yeah, he was attempting to pot it. I get lucky on the rebound, though. No. So Kevin gets three points. It scores now four to three. Peter will just go on and off here. Wants to get a nice little bounce on it to set up another one. Opts to pot that one for another three. Plus he made his ball. I'm going to update the score once this run is done. He's at 21 right now. 23. He's at 36. Looks like he's starting to settle into his game right quick. He's on 49. 52. Seven. Fifty-nine. Uh, looking at an in off here. Puts him at sixty-two. Try another one here. No, he went for the cannon. 64. He wants it to come across. No, yeah, it came across nicely. He's got a couple options here.
66, puts him at 71. I'm trying to keep my voice down, guys. I don't want to interfere with the players. Oh, a nice little screw back shot. 69 points. Another nice cannon there. We'll probably be looking at potting this ball. Yeah, that's a nice little setup right there. Missed it on both sides of the red. 79 and 4. He had 83 points. 79 point little run there. That's not bad. I know he wanted to get a little bit more there. He's just trying to get a nice little touch on that red, but he missed it on both sides. Sometimes the game can be cruel like that. It's a game of millimeters. This is Kevin Augusta at the table. Nice cannon. Looking to go for another cannon here, off the rail, back to yellow. Oh no, he went for the pot, I guess. The layout's okay, it's pretty good. I don't think he really wanted this kind of angle. He was trying to get a little bit better where he could have ran into the yellow than the, the red for the cannon. He might be able to do it. Oh yeah, nice cannon. Let's put a little bit of English. Checked it off the rail. Cannon wants it to come off to the left side of that uh, yellow. It's not too bad. He'll just play a little bit of top spin here and try to push that ball forward. Oh no, it looks like he's trying to pot that red. Pot the red to the side for another three points. Now, if you pot the red ball, you get three points. If you pot the yellow, if you're on the white, you get two points. You don't really want to pot the yellow, everybody knows that, but if you don't, if you're not familiar with English billiards, you don't want to pot your opponent's ball. That is what is considered a losing hazard because their ball goes behind the spot uh, in the D area where they break from, um, and it's considered, of, it's considered a negative uh, position play. You ideally want to keep the red and the yellow, if you're the white ball, you want to keep the red and the yellow at the top of the table. So Kevin got 15 points there, and puts him at 18. <laughs> Looking to do another in-off. Yellow off the white, yellow to the side pocket. Looking at a cannon here, white or yellow into the white, then into the red. Or he might try to cannon to the other side, to the left side, to the corner, like he just did. That's a good shot. <coughs> Can't argue with his experience. He's been playing this for years, so he's obviously making the right choices here. Oh, he tried potting it, but he got the cannon, so that worked out. was a nice shot. I really like that one. Double bounce off the red to hit the yellow. Very creative. Yeah, you never want to pot your 
opponent's cue ball. That was a great shot right there too. Showing that he has a, a lot of skill behind his stroke. He's on a 16 point run. Make that 19. Twenty-one. Potting this one for three more. Sets up for the next cannon. This is what they call working the top of the table. It's basically just a combination of cannon, potting, cannon, potting. And she does it properly, you can get a pretty high run here. He's in the ideal spot right now. Set that beautifully. Set that up beautifully for the pod. Nice check angle off the rail. It's gonna set up the next cannon. Thirty-two. Oh, sorry, forty-two. 44 55 still another nice little run here there's a lot of experience on this table right now guys he's doing it just like the textbook says as long as he stays in the position that he wants to stay in always on the positive side of the ball He's going to be sitting pretty here for a while. Kevin Agosta may not see the table for, for the rest of this match even. shot there too as long as it goes past and it did that's a nice little setup he's gonna set up right now this is called the drop oh it wasn't a drop cannon but ideally he was trying to set up just like he did keep this points running he'll work his way back up to the table he can do this all day long too as long as the ball gets to where he wants it to be I have to draw this. No, he's going for the cannon now. This is the drop cannon. Did he get it? Perfect. Beautifully executed. I'll try my best, Rob. I will. Sorry guys, I just, uh, I've been in the room, but I've been watching what's going on here and I haven't even realized that you guys were interacting with me. That's a hundred point break so far. Peter had a rough start with only a four point open, but then as soon as he got his second turn at the table, he's just tearing this up right now. This is his third turn at the table. Okay. 
his positional play is just incredible. One hundred and ten. One thirteen. Fifteen, hundred and eighteen, Six, one thirty eight. One forty four, one forty six. extra points by dropping the red. I don't think he really wanted that though, but he'll probably try to inside spin this and come back down for the t red just like that, yeah. He kept his, his run going. Now he's going to have to go downwards and try to work his way back up again. Nah, he was, he was trying to pot that ball, bring it back up. 151 point run. Kevin is pretty fortunate here. Oh, somebody's walked into the camera. Two hundred and thirty four. I'll update that score for you guys. by Kevin. It's going to set up for Cat in here. Just got to watch out for not making the yellow here. Just nice. Oh, he just missed it. He didn't want to make the yellow. Okay, that's good. Kevin gets five points. It's about 23. Yeah, it's going to be tough to catch up to Peter now because he's got a nice warmed up stroke. And Kevin has only had a couple of shots at the table so far, hasn't had a chance to settle in yet. the rail and back. Oh, that was beauty. Perfect little shot. He's got the right weight on it. He's got a good line. free to share the stream guys you got lots of incredible English billiards players in the building there's gonna be lots of great matchups throughout the whole week and I have the honor of bringing all that action
action live to you guys from Winnipeg. It's right there for the cannon. Perhaps a little too close for comfort. I don't think it's touching ball, but it's pretty close. You can see a, you can see a little bit of a gap. Now watch this. Oh. Thought he's gonna start going on a crazy nurse here, cannon run. 46. William Lennon. No, that was nice. Sorry, I'm just reading some messages here, guys, in between. Welcome to the stream, Marvin, Darcy Michael, Daryl, Steve, Ronnie, Todd, Alex. Fifty four. Fifty four points. I put some at eighty eight, so two eighty eight. to 23. Oh, just missed that red. That was a pretty tough lead, though. He got pretty close. Maybe just a touch more inside English, and he would have been good. Peter attempted the double. Looks like he left Kevin a decent angle here for an in-off to the side. Doesn't want to hit that yellow, though. Oh. It might be okay. If he didn't hit that yellow, it might have been better, but it's not too bad. Some light carom, light cannon. Oh. Just missed it. He tried going off the rail. Um, I can't interfere right now. That The ref's probably about 10 feet away from me, so I can't really yell out to him right now. But I will talk to the ref after this, after this match is done, and then I'll, uh, I'll address that for you guys for the rest of the matches mo moving forward from this point. Kevin had uh, three points there, right? These are timed matches, guys. So they play for, I believe, an hour. And then as soon as the hour is done, the matches stop. And whatever the score is, that's what the score is. That's who wins. So you're never necessarily out of it until the time runs out. I really like the idea of a time match. That was a nice sign off. Pretty natural to all you English players players, but for the eight ball and nine ball players, it's not as natural. You guys always try to avoid these things. No scratching, please. <laughs> In English billiards, you get rewarded for scratching. All right, I'll make sure that he's not uh, he's not involved as much in the top of the table. Looking to set up another red after this, just a little light cannon, just like that, in off. 
I don't think he wants to do that enough. He'll probably just pot it. Yeah. There's always different options in this game as well. It's just like any other game. It's up to you, the choice that you make, whether you go for a cannon or an in-off or you decide to pot. And those choices that you make are what keeps your run going or ends it. But if you got the skill and you got the will, then you'll get all that money from playing as best as these guys can. You have to force it a little bit. It was somewhat missable, but he just hit it on the thick side to make sure that he got good contact with it. And here he set up nicely for an in off, too. Yeah, that's going to bring him back up. Hmm. His, if he can pot this red, it would be uh, probably ideal, but he's just going to go for another cannon and try to set up. Or there you go. That's what they would call a drop cannon. Yeah, he's back at home. He's ready to, to settle in again. Yeah. Nobody bother bother Peter, he's in his office. Do not disturb sign is open. Another cannon. Another cannon. Sixty-two. Unless the red drops. No, that's perfect for him. Sixty-five. Sixty-seven. They might have to do a little screw back shot here onto the red. Just like that. He's on sixty-nine. Seventy-one. Nursery cannon. Seventy-three. Pot this for seventy-six. Same thing here, off the red into the white. Oh, you'll just pot it, yeah. Pot it made more sense. Now he's gonna do the cannon, yeah. See, that's why I wouldn't get more than 30 points on this game because I'm not very good yet. But I'm learning from Peter right now. He's teaching me the way. Eighty-six. This one to make a 94. Yeah, I agree, Alex. He's, he's set up perfectly right now. There's a half hour left in this match. Last time I said this, so he kind of he didn't end up giving the table back to Kevin. So I won't do the commentator's curse. I'll just let Peter do his thing. Two, looking for an in off off the white, yellow in the bottom right corner. Nicely ex executed. This will help him out for an in off. Oh well, yeah, I don't know. He might want to pot this, but yeah, he decided to pot it. That was a nice shot. Hundred and ten. 
115 with this one. Six. This will be his highest break yet. He's in the zone, man. You can just see it. He got himself in a sweet spot, and then he just never looked back. Seven, not snooker, but feels like it when you're playing this good. Hundred fifty-two. He's got a nice line here. Oh yeah, perfectly. A little, perhaps a little bit too straight on the red, but it'll just draw this back a little bit. Yeah, that made up for it. Seven. Go for a small cannon here onto the red. Oh, you opted to go harder on it. Hmm. Gonna try to bank this white ball up. Oh no, he decided to go that way. Smart shot. Thought he was gonna try to hit it a little bit harder and go that way, but I guess it wouldn't be possible because then you're forcing the angle into a tighter pocket. That was a nice cannon. For these guys, it's all natural. For me, I'm appreciating it. Appreciating it. Being a eight ball player, nine ball player, I totally, totally appreciate nice uh, carom shots like that. They they tend to save you sometimes. Welcome to the stream, Pat. Randy, Charlene. Hundred and seventy. Three hundred and fifty-eight. Sorry, four hundred and fifty-eight. One seventy-three. Seventy five, and this is beauty here. Just make that shot in off from the white, bring that white ball back to the middle. Could have pulled back a little bit more, but that's perfect for the in off again. He'll just gently kick this in and off. Oh, he forced it down. I can never read his play, <laughs> but I mean, I'm not very experienced either like these guys. I'm sure if I had an experienced billiard player right beside me, he'd be like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> nice shot. Notch the red. Yeah, and off off the white. That 
Because I wanted to stick to the rail. Perfect from. That was not perfect for him. I'll have to uh, adjust here with a little bit of English. Oh, just missed it. 192 break. That was nice. update the score for you guys. That was a nice little run. Puts a little bit of pressure on Kevin because he's got to make up for a lot of uh, a lot of missed opportunities that uh, that have given uh, Peter this big boost in the score. He's just got to get into a rhythm. He hasn't really quite had a chance to warm up his stroke yet. Yeah. Just got to settle in. Six points for Kevin. 32. There's a lot of pressure also, you know, being a home player, Kevin himself, not having been warmed up yet. Peter doing what Peter has been doing makes it a little bit tough, puts a little bit of extra pressure when you come up to the table. He'll just try to use this match as a, as a warm up for his next match. Peter is getting a good feel for this table right now. Ooh, we just nudged it just barely. He's got such nice cue ball control. It is ideal for this game. I know you guys, for the people that don't play English billiards, the people that play regular pool, um, you may not see the benefits of this game, but there's tons of benefits to this game, positional-wise, stroke-wise. It will purify your shot. You'll get a better feel for the rails, for the angles. I, myself, am going to start playing it this year. They have the Fall League starting up in September, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. They switched it to a Wednesday night to accommodate the players that play on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's a, it's a beautiful scenario for us players to uh, get an opportunity to come out and play the game. And I'm definitely curious to learn about this game because uh, it's fascinating, really. It reminds me a lot of that uh, three-cushion billiards. Or I, th I believe they call it artistic billiards. and go back down, set up for that white. No, he did not. He's just going to try to do some uh, in-offs here. Yeah. It's kind of like resetting the table. You're going to start moving these balls around until I guess from where he wants them at the top of the table. This just might be it right here. Set up for the next one. Oh, just beautifully executed.
Come on, Kevin. Let's get your stroke going, buddy. Still uh, 17 minutes in the match. Jess missed it. That's just tough luck there, man. He was just perfect line almost. Just didn't take it. some of the background for you guys so I'll try to get that right after this match is done So it says that uh, Peter won the World Championships in 1994, 2001, and 2013. It says he became a Singapore citizen under the Foreign Sports Talent Scheme as a two-time World's Champion in 1994, 2001, while competing for England. I'm trying to see where... He also represented Singapore in the Sea Games in 2009, where he won gold for English billiard singles and bronze for the doubles. He also set the world record for the highest break in billiards with a 1,346 under modern rules at the New Zealand Open Billiards Championships. It says here on 2014 and February 14, yeah, February 2014, he scored his second 1,000 break at the World Billiards Irish Open says also that he is the only player of the modern era who scored more than a thousand points in tournament break and you can see it he's just he's just a incredible player there's a stroke it went 47 for peter that will make it uh 584 584 to 38 that concludes that match guys so peter gilchrist gets his first win Kevin Augusta never got a chance to really get in the match, and uh, he's hoping to settle in into his next match because uh, there's still lots of life in this match and this tournament. That was only the first match of the group. He still has three more matches to go. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go back. Uh, for those of you that just tuned in that don't know, I, I got to apologize. I did some of these... Um, I did some of these picks yesterday, last night, last minute, just to kind of show the American players and the people that play eight ball and nine ball the understanding of the rules and the shots. So basically the way English players play is, is you got options to either pot a ball. In this case, the person is the white ball, right, not the yellow. Pot the red, you get three points. You pot your, cue, your opponent's cue ball, you get two points. You don't want to pot your opponent's cue ball, but if you have to, sometimes you have to, right? Um, that's one of the options. 
Uh, you have an in off. In this case, you're the yellow ball. So the yellow off the red, that would be three points. Yellow off the white would be two points. Finally, you got a cannon, which is worth two points. In this case, you're the white ball. So white ball into the yellow, then going into the red. That would give you the two points. You can combine points added on top of that. You can, um, you know, if you do a cannon with, uh, you know, you drop the red, then you'll get three more points. And uh, I believe the maximum points you can get in English Billiards is 10 points. Maximum time that they respot the red on the red spot consecutively was twice. So that's the reason why a lot of times the players go to the top of the table, they'll do a pot shot, and then they'll do a cannon shot, and then they'll pot again, and then they'll do a cannon shot again. By alternating in between, it resets the, the amount of times that you get to pot that red ball. And that is a, a stra strategic play. That's what they call being at the top of the table, working that out. You guys got a taste of it with uh, Peter... Gilchrist here, he showed you guys a few times how it's like to get at the top of the table and uh, we're uh, fortunate to be able to see such great action in an opening match from such a great player. He's just, he's just really, really opened up uh, opened up my eyes to how great this game can really be played. I hope he's doing the same for you guys. We'll uh, do a quick uh, let's see I'm gonna find out what the next matches are. Oh, don't want that. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. <laughs> um, where was I going? This is where I was going. Sponsors. Thank you to our sponsors. Avo Home Recreation, Taverna, Rado's Restaurant and Lounge. Hepburn Enterprises. Curtis Boudouin Outdoor Vent Vextures, Ventures, sorry. All About Windows, Jeff Corley. He's also playing this event, and so is Curtis. Oh, no, sorry. Curtis is playing, and uh, he's playing. He's representing the one of the, I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's somewhere else. I know he's playing something in a big eight ball event, something to do with the Legion or to do with Anavets. I'm not sure. I don't want to get him confused. I don't want to speak too much and get myself into trouble, but something I'm on that line. Good luck to you out there, Curtis. There's a team of four of them representing Winnipeg. It's quite exciting. Pretty big event. So I'm going to find out what's up with the next matches and uh, what time those matches will start. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the, the stream so far and... Uh, Hope you guys uh, enjoy my commentary. I'm I'm new to English billiards, so I've tried to study the game as best as I could and try to get myself uh, knowledgeable to be able to do the the commentary for you guys. Uh, it's a little bit harder than when I do the snooker commentaries because uh, the points are a little bit faster. So if I start talking about strategies and and um, and uh, the approach of the table, all of a sudden I find myself behind on points and. So it's uh, something I gotta deal with and learn, definitely as a as a streamer and commentator. Um, but so far, survived the first round. I'll be back with the second round, guys. And uh, I don't know, sure. I think it starts at noon. Don't quote me on that. I'll post the matches up for you guys, though. Hope you guys enjoy the stream. See you in the next one. Cheers.